Yo, what's up? It's Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about why is Power BI so shit? Stay tuned. If you're finding this for the very first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date from all the videos from both Adam and this guy. Okay, why is Power BI slow? People ask that question. I, I cannot tell you how many times people ask that. And then you think they're talking about Power BI. So if I go out to app.powerbi.com and start clicking around, you're like, it's not slow, but that's not what they're talking about. That's not what they're talking about. To be honest with you, most of the times, you know what they're talking about? They're talking about your report. They're talking about that report that you created and published out. And I got a secret for you. You know what they really want to tell you? Your baby's ugly. They really want to tell you your baby's ugly. They just don't have the courage. But this guy, I do. Whoever calls me up and says, why is Power BI slow? I say, your baby is ugly. The harsh reality is you probably have three ugly babies hidden in that single report. I'm going to walk you through the steps to how to, how to identify the three ugly babies. And then I'm going to show you how to fix them. Okay. So enough of all this talking, you guys know how I like to do. Let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. So usually when people tell me their report is slow, I say, let's go to the service and let's run the report. So I'm over here in app.powerbi.com. This is their report. So we'll go ahead and click on my slow report. And they say, okay, Patrick, and they're sitting there with their chest pumped out. Take a look. So we click here and things are spinning. So I say, well, I'll be back. I'm going to go get some coffee. I'll be back later. So, wow, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Woo, that is a slow report. I see what they're talking about. So the first thing I say, hey, can I see the PBIX file? Can I see, you know, where you created this report? And let's take a look at it. Okay. So they say, sure, Patrick. So they go and they open up their beautiful report. And so I'll add a blank page. And you guys have seen this demo before. And what I'll do is I'll go to view, I'll click performance analyzer, and I click start recording. So let's go to a page, click on mini cards, and then you see the little ants spinning around and then I'm scratching my head. They're looking at me. He's like, well, it wasn't that slow when we first published it out. I'm like, well, you probably added more data to the model. I was like, yeah, we add more data to the model. Okay. When this finishes up, I go, all right, stop the re stop it. So we stop and we start expanding things out. So we'll go to this guy. And the first thing I'll notice is, wow, look at other DAX is big. We'll get to DAX, but look at other. So we'll expand a few more out. And I go, wow, look at other. Other's a lot. The DAX is pretty fast on this one, but man, other is a lot. Other is where Power BI does all this preparation and rendering of elements. And there's certain things that happen at the same time, only a certain number. And the only way to reduce other is to optimize the report from a visual perspective. Adam has a wonderful video. I think I said a wonderful video. Adam has a great video that he created about optimizing your reports from a visual perspective. My buddy Chris Hamill at Allure and BI has another really good blog post where he kind of details it. The only way to do it is to consolidate visuals. And so we just found, remember I said, you may have three ugly babies. You may have a triplet of ugly babies. So we just found the first ugly baby. Ching! Got too many visuals. How do you improve it? It's easy. Consolidate them. And like I said, go watch Adam's video, go read the blog post. Let me show you how I did it in this case. So we're going to go ahead and start recording again. And we're going to flip over to where I call the matrix. So you can see I had six cards here, but what I've done is I've consolidated these into two matrices, one matrix for these values and one matrix for these values. So we're going to go ahead and flip over there. So now you can see that matrix probably hit the cache, but these are two brand new queries that's being sent to the back. So 30 seconds, we got a lot of time spent up here, 40 seconds, 50 seconds. It's a lot, you know? Down here, we're about 30 something seconds down here where I have um, minimized the number of visuals. And if you take a look at other, I got all my time back on other. So the DAX is still problematic, but we got rid of one of the ugly babies. Okay. So now you only have two more ugly babies. That's what I'm guessing. There's two more ugly babies and we can get some time back. Okay. So then I say, well, let me see the data model. And then that's when they go. I don't know if I want you looking at my data model, Patrick. I know you have this obsession. Some people even say you have a fetish with data models. I don't know if I want you to look at it. Just let me see it. Just let me see the data model. Let's take a look. So we go and they open up, they hesitantly, apprehensively, whatever you want to say, open up this data model. I go, wait, it's a single table. 
And they go, yeah, yeah, but look what I did. I created some folders. So I put all my measures in one folder. I put my date, dimension. I go, that's not a dimension. Yeah, I put it in a folder. So it's like date, dimension. Remember usability? You talked about usability over in that star schema. This is not what I'm talking about. And then I put all my other columns. Do you need these columns? Yeah, I will eventually. Yeah, well, remove them if you don't need them. But I don't want to remove them. I need them now. Well, then pull all of the other corresponding data in. And they go, you know how many columns it's going to be in my table if I pull all those columns in? No, 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 no. Obviously you did not watch why Power BI loves the star schema video. I'm going to pause and go watch it. Just kidding, right? Just kidding. But you should definitely go watch that video and you create a data model at a minimum in the case of this one, in the case of this sample, just write some DAX and create a calendar table. Now you can take advantage of the time base calculations that are built in the Power BI. The second ugly baby in this trio is your data model, right? And now I'm making an assumption that because you have this this ugly data model, right? That there's something wrong with your DAX. And you're like, oh no, my DAX is great, Patrick. I go, okay, I've already showed you the twins and let's see if we can get to triplets, right? So let me see your DAX. And they go, I don't know if I want you to see my DAX. Go, let me see it, just let me see it. So we go to take a look at the DAX. So we're gonna flip over here. And like I thought, because you're not using a dimensional model, because you don't you don't have a date table that you've marked as such, you're writing some, eh, it's not bad DAX, but you could have used some variables here, but you're writing your own time intelligence. And that can be slow depending on the volume of your data. I will say this, some of you probably have, you know, 100,000 rows, even a million rows, even 10 million rows, and it's working. But as your data scales, as your data grow, if you wanna make a model that scales with the growth of the data, you need to make sure that you follow these best practices. So we've tackled too many visuals. I mean, it should tell you that you need a star schema and then an indirect result of having that star schema is gonna be better DAX. Let me show you. So what we did in this case was we actually built out a star schema and you can take a look at the data model. We actually built out a star schema, rolled a little tiny bit of DAX so they could have their own calendar table. So if you take a look at the DAX, we wrote for their calendar table. You can expand this out as much as you want. But what I wanna show you is, look at this. If we go back to the original model where they had flat file, look at the DAX they wrote for total quantity year to date. Look at this DAX. Whew. Kind of gnarly. But if we look at the DAX for my star schema for the exact same expression that yields the exact same results, it's just one line because I'm using my built in time intelligence. And just like that, I've gotten rid of the big ugly baby, but really I've gotten rid of the triplets, the three ugly babies that make up your report. So Patrick, you still haven't showed this, this super blazing fast report. <laughs> Let me show you. So now let's head over to the web browser, go to app thatpowerbi.com. We're going to go out to why is my report slow workspace. Then we're going to go to my fast report, put the blank page there, click on my matrix and boom, just like that. Just like that. It's running so much faster. Everyone is happy. And now they're not complaining about my report. Three things, reduce the number of visuals, consolidate them into some matrices if you can, or other, other tricks that you could play around with. Um, make sure you have a star schema or something similar to a star schema that resembles a star schema and then write some really good DAX and definitely use variables. All right. What do you guys think? Any questions, any comments? Are you running to any of these? I'd love to know. Let's continue the conversation. Where? In the comments below. If it's your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel, hit that subscribe button, if you like my video, give me a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.